All right. This one is called A Comprehensive Guide to Isekai from Mr. Lunar Aquinox. This is my first video of him I think I'm watching. Let's check it out. After exploring all seven continents, humanity as a collective came to a singular conclusion. Okay. This world sucks. This led to the creation of Isekai, or as translated, Japan's cash cow. Since it is isekai is actually you know other world right it's other world it's actually not reincarnation fun fact reincarnation is tensei and nothing about tensei is isekai although most of the times people get reincarnated into a different role so it's tensei isekai but isekai is just other world since the success of the first isekai that time my father reincarnated me into another world to defeat the <laughs> demon king Japan dude that's the bible a time my father reincarnated me into another world. To That's literally a Bible. Jesus Christ is an isekai character trying to beat Satan. To defeat the demon king, Japan began mass producing them to the point that it's become Japan's number one export. Whoa. And I, now I... Top 10 Japanese exports per billions of dollars. He was memeing around with the, you know, the translation shit. But I'm going to assume that this is fucking real. At the very bottom, you have precious rare metals. Ships and boats, mineral fuels, chemicals, plastics, iron, steel, optical, medical, electricity, machinery. I don't know where the blue one went. Maybe it's this is fucking harem, bro. Lolicon content. Harem. And then there's Isekai at 154.1 billions of dollars, according to the chart. Even overtaking Pokemon furry art to better understand Isekai. Okay. I don't know if you're trolling or not. When you're gonna label this fucking bar as Pokemon furry art with Vaporeon showing up, I genuinely don't know if you're trolling. I'm just gonna assume that you're trolling right now. Furry art. To better understand Isekai, I've spent the past week doing nothing but watching Isekai to yeah. create a guide to help you understand the complex subject that is Isekai. Oh In boy. the sea of anime that gets released every season, what can an Isekai do to stand out from the competition? What can it do? What has- what's an isekai that's recently fucking stood out? It's always the same copy-paste fucking format. I think that initially an isekai can be differentiated by the method of being transported, right? Because how many methods are there? You can like die, then you can get reincarnated into a different world, just like Mushoku Tensei. You can also get summoned into another world, right? Some characters in Mushoku Tensei are like that, but that also happens in many different isekais. And my favorite format is being summoned, but with the total classroom and then not knowing who characters are because like that makes it for more of a, a mystery show like Kumu Deska, right? So I'm a spider. So what? I love those premises. That's one of the first things that you can do to differentiate yourself as an isekai. And then on top of that, I think one of the most interesting isekai that I've seen that really was different because main character is usually fucking broken, busted OP. Um, the appraisal isekai was interesting, though. Right? Reborn in a, as an aristocrat, that, that appraisal anime where the main character's power was basically appraising people and collecting other people that can fight on your behalf. And it was more like po politics and, you know, a diplomacy kind of aspect. That was pretty interesting. Uh, Mop, seeing Mop Seca right now on the screen, we've we, we seen the dating sim one. The dating sim uh, is a, also a very interesting different sub niche of isekai where it's like an otoma game but you're reincarnated into the otoma game and there's this format of you know the shitty dumb princes and you have the villainous and stuff like that that's like a that does you know kind of stand out recently because it's not the same as you know the traditional isekai and then uh, what's the other one i was i think that a lot of the times the template is like you get summoned the goddess gives you op powers and you go fight the demon lord but some of the twists recently is like they hate the goddess and sometimes we're just siding straight up with the demons and stuff like that or you can just do fucking konosuba where it just takes like a it's like a deconstruction of isekai tropes and stuff like that and just has fun have a compelling story great visuals well-written characters nah Wrong. none of that it's by having a title that sounds like it was created by a crackhead trying to reach a word count since most isekai they are getting longer and longer and longer, man. Kai originate from light novels on the website Shosetsu Kaninaro. It's important to have outrageous concepts to get people to read them. Because reincarnate as a sword and reincarnate as a vending machine. We've seen both of them. Vending machine was actually half decent. Don't shit on this show until you actually checked it out. It's a decent like 7 out of 10 slice of life funny anime. I genuinely enjoyed it until we dropped it because no one fucking watched. Reincarnate as a sword? Low-key mid. <laughs> Six or seven out of ten, yeah. I mean, both these shows are kind of mid. 
They're, they're decent watches though. It wasn't like abhorrently bad. Outrageous concepts to get people to read them. Because who would read Overlord when I could read? I am a behemoth, an S-ranked monster, but mistaken <laughs> for a cat. I live as an elf girl's pet. A wise man once. <laughs> Repeat that again. That title. Pet. A wise man once. Go, 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 go. When I could read, I am a yeah. behemoth, an yeah. S-ranked monster, but mistaken for a cat. I live as an elf girl's pet. That's not too far off from Inukai-san's dog, man. Because <laughs> you're just a pet for a fucking hot girl. Wise man once said, people yeah. die if they are killed. However, True. after applying the scientific method, we have disproved this statement due to the existence of an all-powerful entity. Isekai protagonist. They all really look the same. And when did it all start? Is Kirito re really the OG Isekai protag, you know, template? And you're gonna say... Isn't an easy guy? Hold up. Hold up. Semantics. We're just arguing about definitions. If an isekai is simply you in a different world, now, then we have to think about is the full dive world, Aincrad, GGO, those different video game worlds that they play in, is this a different world? If you say yes, then it is an isekai. If you say no, then it's not an isekai, but again, it's just semantics. And I think Kirito, the black swordsman, the typical Ikemen type, you know, standard black hair with middle bang down, you know, it, it does feel like he is the template. Existence of an all powerful entity, isekai protagonist. All of them look the same, bro. Look like a family. Like, let me try to fucking guess these animes, bro. I don't even know these three. Like, like, let's see this shit. I don't know. They all just look the same. I genuinely don't know. All six of these? Like, we watch a lot of shitty isekais in this channel. I don't know any of them. The guy protagonist. All the or let's go down a little bit down here too. Hold up, hold up. Protagonist. Down three? I don't even know. Something about me says like wise man grandchild, but no, no, I don't, I don't know. Although this may look like a family gathering, the only thing that they have in common is that they keep it in the family. No game, no life, baby. about everything else. Pre isekai, the protagonist. Cautious hero. Yeah, cautious hero. Such a good fucking season of anime, man. Is either a neat gamer or works at Mappa Studio. Typically having the <laughs> Mappa getting called out. Man, you think MAPPA would be generous enough to let their workers sleep in their office? No, you gotta start fucking working. No, 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 no. They got an electric shock collar as soon as someone falls asleep. Studio, typically having the personality of a block of wood while looking like the equivalent of the generational Pikachu clones. <laughs> True. This is so that the viewer can self-insert themselves in since escapism is- You know what? Having the main character be all the fucking same set them- I mean, at the end of the day, right? What I say about fucking rom-coms. Why is most rom-coms, the main character is such a beta pussy that does nothing, has a cardboard personality, is not outgoing, has nothing going on for them, not athletic, not smart, not rich, not fucking got any sort of family background, yet the girl goes for it. Because you can self-insert yourself. And the more that you can relate to that character, the more likely you're going to be buying the fucking DVD and Blu-rays. But the Isekai anime as well. Yeah, the more I think about it, this might not be a conspiracy theory, man. Having every character just be generic so you can just basically, just like Zacido, right? What is Zacido in SAO? It's basically all these different fucking full die games that's all the fucking same. So you can just slap the same, you're, you're, you can slap yourself, insert yourself into every one of the isekais because the main character is all just the same. You're the main character, guys. Is a compelling factor of isekai because we all know isekai's target audience. <laughs> Is this you guys? Do you, go, do you guys look like this? This guy? There's no shame. I would argue that the isekai audience... I, I, I think that the people that watch animes, like fucking Kubo Won't Let Me Alone, or like Shikimori is not a cutie. <laughs> I'm not shitting on that anime, but like, I feel like those rom-coms, or again, they're selling that fucking delusional fantasy. That audience is fucking worse than the isekai power fantasy audience. I, I, it's a different type of power fantasy. Because like in rom-com power fantasy, like you're doing a power fantasy on like whether or not how much like you can get all these bitches, right? In isekai power fantasy, yeah, 
yeah, there is like a, usually a harm aspect to it most of the times, but you know, it's 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 a more traditional power fantasy of like overpowering your opponents and getting revenge on your bullies and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm still gonna side with the Isekai audience over the rom com. <laughs> Protagonist is then isekai by dying from overwork, being yeah. trapped in a video game, truck-coon, down these stairs, or by being so Down these stairs. How many understand this meme right now? This is an OG One Piece meme where Zoro's backstory... Have you seen One Piece? Most of One Piece backstories are so fucking sad and tragic and so heartfelt. And then there's Zoro, where his... Love of his life, his rival, fell down the stairs and died one day. And then he's like, for her, I'm going to become the best swordsman ever. It was fucking stupid. Down the D. This is One Piece spoilers. There's a significance of people with the letter D in their name. Down these stairs or by being summoned to another world. <laughs> because fate. It, th does Queen Elizabeth exist actually in fate? Like Grand Order. It's like, you know, Da Vinci... Fucking Mordred, you know, King Arthur, all those historical figures exist. Does Queen Elizabeth exist or is it too fucking modern? World. Because the prophecy said the hero who would save the world would be a Genshin Impact player. <laughs> the protagonist does, of course, come from the. Actually, I play Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail and Zenless Zone Zero. Only place on Earth. Japan, Japan, and luckily for our main character, in this unknown world, everyone speaks the universal Japanese. language of English subtitles. Well, sometimes, you know, like when they go with this shit, like it's, it's again, this is another like bingo checkmark of like, okay, I'm new isekai, how are they going to handle the language, right? Sometimes the most bullshit easiest way is to just like, all right, we just already gave you this like passive where everything's auto translated. So everyone just speaks Japanese, even though it's like a foreign language. And honestly, sometimes I prefer that. Like, you don't have to give me a convoluted reasoning as to why these people are speaking different languages. Just fucking get over with it. I, 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 this ain't my first isekai. But then there's like shows like Mushoku Tensei, where it's like, they have their own fucking isekai language and multiple different races have different languages. They actually give a fuck and try to really flesh out the translation system. Like, Skimichi Moon Fantasy is another anime where it's really interesting because, not too much spoilers, but... There's like different languages spoken by, let's say, humans and demon kind and different monsters. And, you know, the main character can only speak this specific language, even though they're all speaking Japanese. It, it, it is pretty interesting to see how different isekais handle this language barrier. Now in another world, we need to give them a quirk, such as bringing an item from our world, using knowledge Bidet. from our world, or being reincarnated into something strange. I got reincarnated into the most popular girl in my high school class, this is Bidet. How do you guys like that title, huh? Being reincarnated as a Bidet for the most popular girl at your school. I think we're cooking with the title here. Change. They can spawn in at four different levels. Human who never gets... Oh, that was Tensor, I think, right? Yeah, that's Takumi. No, I forgot his name, his friend. This is, this is Tensor, though. Different levels. Human who never gets powers. Starts out weak, but becomes mm. overpowered. Starts overpowered in Kirito. Because he's just so cool. Hot and cool, Isekai yeah. worlds are deeply rooted in MMORPGs, with most of them having the same power system. Yeah. Which is why you can skip the first episode of every Isekai. No, that is criminal. Like, unironically, I understand he's just saying this as a joke, but one of my favorite things as an isekai connoisseur is the first episode. Because we've watched so many, so many isekais. And they all is pretty much, it's all just a generic trash copy-paste with a little twist. But the first episode is special. I'm always like, alright, what's gonna happen this time? What kind of setting are we in? Is Truck-kun gonna visit us this time? Are we gonna get summoned? And if we do, we reincarnate. Is the church gonna be evil? Do we have a sexy big booba waifu goddess? What kind of powers are we gonna get? There's these like bingo check marks that I love doing an isekai whenever like a new isekai airs. It's actually so fun. First episode is usually the most fun and then every episode after that it's just like... Yeah, they didn't really have a plan with this. It's just kind of turning into trash. But I do enjoy the first episode of many isekais. And... Another thing, isekais that are actually good. Isekais that actually give a fuck and have good writing. I think there's a pattern where the first episode, they do a shitload of really fast exposition that goes over the casual audience's head, but bulk of the plot is already there. They pretty much hint all the important shit right away in the first episode, but you're too busy just enjoying this garbage 
that like you don't even realize that all the shit has already been set up. Everything you pretty much need to hear, even though it's not fleshed out in details, all the hints, it's given to you in the first episode. But because like you don't really think about it, it's not that important. But later on, as you realize, it's like, oh shit, they mentioned that in the first episode. Uh, I think like Kumudeska did that really well in first in, in the first episode. I think that Tensura actually first episode. There's a shitload of things that happens in the cave with Veldora and Rimuru. The shit that they talk about, there is so much stupid shit that goes on that's like so plot heavy. Skimishi Moon the Fantasy 2. Like as they're falling down and the and the moon gods giving you all the powers and they're just like speed running this shit. All that information, so critical. First episode of Isekai, you need to watch that shit and actually lock in if you give a fuck. Or all of it. After arriving, the protagonist grinds out all of the side quests, getting the most overpowered abilities before starting the main storyline. All isekai must also have the protagonist join the adventurers guild. And every adventurous guild receptionist is Big Booba. But upon arrival, they're stopped isekai by some guy who looks like a biker gang reject who challenges them. <laughs> That's true. Right, every time we get into the Adventures Guild, what happens? We want to sign up, people are like, oh, what the fuck? This is a weak loser, right? And they try to challenge and there's a quick power fantasy of just, you know, correcting them. Another common thing is like, you know, um, there might be like an orb, right? In the guild, they're trying to measure how strong you are and you put your hand over and it's like, no way, it's rank hero. It's like, oh my God, right? That shit always happens. <laughs> The Every protagonist then joins the guild, taking missions that they're clearly overqualified yeah. for and traveling to other realms for the sole purpose of expanding their knowledge of the local wildlife. Raftalia, raccoon Pokemon. I forget that she's an actual fucking raccoon. Other than your generic town setting, Isekai can also- Show us the Isekai map! Show us the copy-paste isekai map that we see in every goddamn isekai. Also take place in the most interesting place that one could imagine. Your local high school. <laughs> it is important to remember yeah. that these are fantasy worlds of magic and wonder, only limited by an author's imagination, which is why every world yeah. should be Yes! Here are the copy-paste isekai map. Could you tell? Which animes these are by glancing at it? I think the bottom one is Konosuba, right? I feel like the bottom one is Konosuba. I think bottom and top is actually just identical. Even the water path is like this fucking same. I'm not sure. Bottom and top is I. Well, the middle actually has a bit more water in the top, right? But every isekai map, it's just the same shit world should be unique and definitely not all take place in the 1700s so slavery is a prominent plot point in mm. Mm -mm -mm. name a better combo than peanut butter and jelly slavery and isekai baby slavery and questionable age gap where the fucking main character is a grown-ass man reincarnated as a child and grows up and starts raising up other kids his age but if you think about it how old is he mentally i don't no, that's why everyone hates Mushoku Tensei and Rudy, right? Just about every isekai, because mm -hmm. how are we gonna show the protagonist is a good person if he doesn't free slaves? That's right. What? He doesn't free them? He buys them? <laughs> yeah, we participate like Julie in Mushoku Tensei season two. We just fucking straight up participated in the economy. We bought her freedom! <laughs> She's still a slave, but it's a better life! I don't fucking know. Sometimes they buy him. With all of them developing Stockholm Syndrome? But yes. since the protagonist is meant to be- Re-Monster, perfect example of Stockholm Syndrome developing for a bunch of girls that we kidnap as goblins. Put them in their fucking cave and say, you just live here and then later they never want to leave. Why? Because we're such good people. We're not slavers. We're not involved in human trafficking. No! We just- We're good people that, you know, <laughs> people, they just want to hang around with us, man. Definitely not Stockholm Syndrome. To be a self-insert, I guess the author thought the only way imaginable for its audience to get a girl was mm. like this. However, we live Slavery? in an ever-evolving world. We have self-driving cars. Got the first image. I have a feeling that the AI waifu is not too far away, guys. You too can have your own isekai slave waifu in the form of an AI bot for the price of $5,000. ...of a black hole and have even discovered the cure for cancer as well as the cause. Which is why I'm sure in our progressing society that we the trope of monkey. slavery will go away. Huh? No, it won't. What's this? New Isekai? 
New Peak Isekai coming. Uh, that's a Japanese title. What does that translate to English? The guy just got announced. Main character gets kicked out of his party, so he decides to take revenge by buying their mothers from the slave market? What? What? How? Why are the... Okay, first of all, okay, I get... I get getting kicked out of the party, but why are every party member's moms are in the slave market? And, and we buy... This is a different level of power fantasy. This is MILF Island. But like, we're cucking everyone else. Do we get to buy our own mom? Is, there, is our own mom involved? No, because, I, well, it's an isekai. Our mom's not here. It's, she's in a different world. I, this is crazy. Oh. We'll be watching that shit. When is it airing? When was this video posted? One year ago. When is this anime airing, bro? Side characters are a fundamental part of every story, adding stakes, revealing key details of the world, and progressing the main character's development. This statement is actually true for Isekai, but there is one variable present that can affect it, which I call the Doki Doki Principle. Side characters in Isekai are interesting, unique characters okay. until they fall in love with the protagonist, causing them to melt into a pair of boobs with four lines of dialogue. The four lines of dialogue is... Bofa says, hello, traveler. I wonder if protagonist loves me. I love protagonist. I have boobs for protagonist. Have you seen the protagonist? Yeah. I guess at a point, right? When the girls aren't in love with the character yet. I mean, did Sylphie kind of turn like that? In Mushoku Tensei, let's think about Sylphie. Maybe. I don't know. Most of the times when the girls are not, you know, attached to the main character, they are, they are individualistic. They have their own different, you know, quirks going on. But the moment they fold, then everything about them just becomes like a static character, I guess. And all their existence, their only reason for existing is to just, you know, gush over the main character. Power fantasy in that sense, maybe. This effect is so prevalent due to the extensive use of harems in... <laughs> Yo! Are you serious? These are SAO characters all getting- But like, Subu got cucked? Silica, your little sister got cucked? Asna, main girl, but low-key getting cucked by Yu-Gi-Oh right now. We're watching season 3, check it out in the playlist. Sinon, low-key best girl of SAO. Of harems in e Lizbeth? Bro, we're cucking Klein right now by getting with Lizbeth, and I don't even know who the fuck the girl is on the left. I, that's probably a little spoilers, but whatever. Isekai. Each harem has a variety of characters, some of which you may have seen. Wait, 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 who was on the gauntlet here? That's Arifureta. Of the Arifureta- Wait a minute. Why the fuck is the main character's face the dude from um, Assassin Isekai, right? This is the uh, Assassin- That's that Hajime. Well, they look the same. I hope that this dude, Equinox, understands. He knows that it's not Hajime, but he's playing into the meme of, yeah, every fucking Isekai protagonist looks the same, so I'm gonna put in, you know, the fucking Assassin Isekai MC in here for Arifurata as a joke. I, I would give him the benefit of the doubt to do that. Of the girls here, Sensei? She alright. Shizuku's the best. Shizuku's the best because she hasn't really folded for Hajime just yet. Even though it's kind of showing signs that she, she is going to. Every other girl is just kind of fucking boring. Mew is just daughter. Kaori, I've always hated her from the fucking beginning. <laughs> Tio's only existence is for anal jokes. Like, her- She is a pitiful existence, bro. Her entire flashback with her dad with the fucking prophecy as her fucking clan is getting culled and she's the last survivor. One day, my daughter, a hero will show up to penetrate your ass and you will only be reduced as bussy jokes. That's it. Goodbye, daughter. Shea, I like her. Shea, Shizuku, I like him. Mew, you know, daughter. Yeah, Yue, ugh, I don't know. Kaori, ugh. Shizuku, Shea, I like him. Some of which you may have seen, such as the royal elf, enslaved demi-human, Sundere mm. Lolly, and the peak of human trashy goddesses creation. Before joining the harem, some of these characters must be defeated in combat. After being defeated, they immediately lose all power, serving yep. as much purpose as Sleeping Beauty did in season two. Aside from the harem, there are numerous other side characters that can be cast. Oh, guild receptionist! The guild receptionist. It's cautious hero girl. I don't recognize her. This dude looks like a badass. I don't know. I, have, I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Categorized as good. Man, I've seen a lot of isekais, but I don't recognize most of these fucking side characters, huh? Maybe it's picked from the specific isekais that we've never fucking watched. Categorized as good or evil by playing a good old game of Smash or Pass. Rich okay. noble who looks... <laughs> Why are the rich noble always looking nice this shit, bro? You can already tell who, like, the scumbags are. It's like he woke up and chose diabetes. Pass. The king <laughs> Woke up and chose diabetes. Now, this just looks like an evil king, right? Right over here. Just like a corrupt evil king emperor right over here. King who looks like he's one day away from retiring permanently. Pass. The Pope or High Priest. Evil. Pope always fucking evil. Church and Isekai, you know they're fucking evil. But sometimes they're not. Like, wrong way to use healing magic. That, that was like a... That sucked me. Now, this is where it starts to get difficult, but if you look at the images long enough, you'll come to the realization that one is in fact wearing glasses. Yes. Smash and pass. pass. The Demon Lord. The Crayman. Demon Lord Castle also needs to be, you know, uh, shown as an example where every fucking Demon Lord Castle HQ, their base of operation is on a Castlevania hill with dark lightnings cracking down with the demon lord shaking a fucking cup of wine or something bro every time demon lord the end goal of most isekai protagonists is defeating this entity saving the <laughs> cautious hero bro he just fucking sent the goddess flying at the monster that you know i think this is the bad ending right that demon this one was the bad ending one is defeating this entity saving the world making this by far the most difficult one to figure out because you may expect this just for it to transform into a lolly and join the true right anytime you got a badass design some kind of some kind of big ass armor anytime the whole body is covered you just never know what they're gonna turn into the harem fbi finally the main character's sister this one should be a no both are passes okay both are underage Leafa is stacked as all hell compared to the little sister here, but they're both little sisters. Brainer. What? Both just had a match with their big brothers. Not me. They're big brothers, okay? What? Then there are side characters who fall under the category of characters who exist. Yeah. You have the shop. <laughs> they just exist. <laughs> uh, also, dwarves and elves are always fighting in isekai, but that's just like a... I think that's just like a fantasy, not just specific to isekai anime, but to like... You know, like Lord of the Rings and high fantasy like that always has that shit, right? Just who exist. You have the shopkeepers, dwarf blacksmiths, yeah. CGI monsters. Every dwarf in an isekai is gonna be some artisan blacksmith, bro. That's like saying every Asian person's good at math, man. That's a positive stereotype, I guess, but if it's a dwarf, you know it's gonna be some sort of blacksmith. They're gonna craft you shits. CGI monsters who exist to be killed, and yep. guild girls who yes. get better customer service than Chick-fil-A. There is also- What was that? I don't have a Chick-fil-A in Canada, but I hear Chick-fil-A is, uh, aren't they the homophobic company? Every Sunday, they, they, it's like a day off for church, but they're, they're like anti-gay. Isn't that Chick-fil-A? But Chick-fil-A is like such a good product where the gays will still go there to eat it, fully aware that they're homophobic because like the product fucking speaks for itself. <laughs> Would you like my left kidney with that order? No, I'm good. No, I'm good. A chance that other humans are isekai alongside the protagonist. You have the shopkeepers, yep. dwarf blacksmiths, CGI monsters who exist to be killed, and guild girls who give better customer service than Chick-fil-A. There is also a chance that other humans are isekai alongside the protagonist. I love that format. I love it. And that's my favorite format. This exact example, right? Is Kumo Desuka. All these characters. This is Sensei. This is the shitty fucking main character. No, not. He's the protagonist of the human side. We got Wakaba right over here. We got the Earth Dragon that used to bully Wakaba. The whole premise of Spider was so fucking lit. Because, like, the thing that I really enjoyed about Arifureta as well was the fact that we all got ported in like as a class and when you get someone as a class already there's these like different relationships and tension like who's the bullies who's the popular kids who's the outcast and stuff like that and usually the main character is the outcast and something about that you know getting revenge on your bullies part it's like a power fantasy but on top of that beyond the arifurita setup what kumo Deska does is they don't tell you right what the humans look like because like in Arifurita, you just get summoned. But in Kumodeska, their souls are implanted into different people. So it's like a guessing game of like, oh shit, who could these characters be? That extra layer was my favorite setup of any isekai. 
other humans are isekai'd alongside the protagonist, who simply exist to act as comparison. Fuck you, Motoyasu, you piece of shit. Well, they are moderately successful. Fuck you, Koki, you piece of shit. As for individuals, the protagonist is the cousin that they get compared to, who graduated from Harvard. <laughs> Again, he knows who this guy is. Equinox knows, okay? Who Hajime is? And who... I, I forget. Was his name Lloyd? No, no, no. It's World's Finest Assassin. I fucking forgot. Who graduated from Harvard and did World War III and is a professional pianist at the age of nine. While mm -hmm. the females of the group have a chance to join the harem, being graced with a singular personality trait, Tsundere. the guys... I mean, can you name a single one you remember? Aside from Klein. Klein is a great one, man. Klein is such because he's like a supporting character he was always there for kirito reaching out klein was fucking amazing but the other dude characters right all the zai characters like for example this piece of shit from kumodeska they only exist to be like the antagonist to be the shitty antagonist that used to bully the main character for you to get the power fantasy off of klein was never like that klein existed to enhance the main character in a positive light klein was such a mature he doesn't seem mature but the way that he approached kirito when he was so depressed and edgy in sao season one it was amazing I mean, can you name a single one you remember? Aside from Klein. Then you had the variations of the genre. Parody Isekai and mm. Reverse Isekai. A Reverse Isekai takes someone from another world and brings them to Japan. Was, which yeah, is I like conveniently that the dream of every anime fan with no life. Inukai-san. <laughs> Inukai-san, bro. Of every anime fan with no life. Which is every anime fan. Yeah, but that's just us. because they take place in our world doesn't mean they're not just as action-packed and as interesting as a regular Yo, yo, whoa, 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 So, uh, we are gonna watch ReZero one of these days, okay? In about two weeks, I think. Dangers in my heart, when it's over, we gotta do six episodes of Slime Diaries because we're halfway through that shit, but we stop for a bit, then we get to ReZero. Out of context spoilers, for sure. But like, it is what it is. All right, I, I wonder what the fuck is happening here. Bro's looking like fucking Blue Archive Sensei right now. Megarano. The isekai deconstructs the isekai genre and turns it into a joke, which isn't too difficult because it does that by itself. Now, for one to fully complete the path of- What is this title? A reincarnation has a slave. <laughs> reincarnation has a slave. They're not even trying to hide it. And they're like, yep, Rikai is a slave. Self. Now, for one to fully complete the path of Isekai, the final step that they must conquer is parody Isekai. Only after collecting the knowledge of all Isekai can one truly appreciate its humor. While okay. many who have reached this stage call themselves the Ascended Ones, we- I think I am an Ascended One. Now, yes, we haven't watched ReZero, but the amount of Isekai around that we have consumed in this channel and we, I, I intentionally dodged Overlord and ReZero on purpose. I know that those are huge titles. But like, I'm intentionally stalling so that my channel can get bigger too, so that the viewership when I farm the series can be even greater, right? But I think that we are Ascended Ones. Like, there is, I doubt there's many channels on YouTube right now that are as sweaty as we are covering Isekai. We refer to them as psychiatric patients. <laughs> well, most that's also us, yes. People who have never watched Isekai may be wondering, why do you watch it? Well, we have all- Why do we watch Isekai? Well, from a YouTube algorithm perspective, it, that, that is just the audience that I popped off with because popular Isekais were trending on seasonal animes and it just I was just given that audience. But beyond that, why do we watch it? Well, why do we watch anything? Entertainment. And why is Isekai entertaining? Because it's fun to envision yourself in a different world doing something different. It's escapism at its finest, right? Watching anime, it is a form of escapism, right? No one wants to think about their fucking shitty ass lives, working a job they hate. It. Life is so fucking hard. You come home, you want to distract yourself and have some entertainment. And, you know, anime is that form. But then beyond that, it's also fun to imagine yourself going onto a different world and doing different shit. I don't know. I, I love the whole format. Even though people shit on isekai templates, I... Like, I understand that isekai anime may be one of the lowest form of entertainment in anime genres, right? I get that. But sometimes, I'm not trying to get a three-star Michelin fucking dish. I'm not trying to watch these extremely smart and pretentious anime for only the enlightened ones. I just want to eat fucking taquitos and pizza from 7-Eleven at 3 in the morning in a parking lot, smoking weed with my friends. 
that's what I want to do sometimes. And Isekai is that. It serves a different purpose and it, it, it gives me entertainment, man. It's fun. All as a community collectively gaslit ourselves into believing that Isekai is actually kind of good. But in reality, Jesus. he's a kind of bad. <laughs> oh, God. I think. I now think that. Just because it's Isekai doesn't mean it's bad. Right? Now, we're going to watch ReZero pretty soon, which is on the left side. We're going to watch Overlord when Season 5 ever gets announced. But you can already see that these top three are getting picked because these are the top Isekais with Mushoku Tensei and Slime, right? These are objectively good shows in my opinion. But the reason that Isekai gets shit on so much is because people see the success of Isekai. And when they see the success of something, they're going to copy it and mass produce it. When you have such sheer volume of shitty isekais coming in, of course the quality is going to drop comparatively to other genres. More people are going to criticize this genre, saying most isekai are trash, because it is true. There's so many shitty isekais being pumped in, you know, being produced, min-max the fuck out, just to, you know, hit some kind of, you know, um, just some kind of a threshold bottom line, that of course people are going to think isekai is trash. But if you look at the good isekais, man, if you look at the good isekais, and you've seen them. These shows are great. Just because a show is isekai doesn't mean it's bad. But there's a lot of bad isekai because of the success of the isekai genre and the sheer volume of people, again, just pumping out this garbage. Now, that's not to say that there aren't some phenomenal anime in yep. the genre, like the greatest isekai of all time, Kuma 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 Bear. Thank you! I was getting worried with you fucking showing Orsted and Nanahoshi down here slowly coming up with Mushoku Tensei. That's a base take. I've never seen Kuma Kuma, but it looks very cute. Kuma 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 Bear. However, it is important to highlight the one flaw of Isekai. What? It exists. But also, much like the comments I get from light novel readers saying that the light- Classroom of the Elite! So it is true! Right? I, I, I think I see ReZero as well, but like... <laughs> For some reason, for the light novel elitists, it's always Classroom of the Elite. Saying that the light novel is better, they it never is. end. This is due to them either getting put into the never getting another season box, or simply because the light novel that it's based on hasn't ended. Luckily for the isekai genre, it has one thing going for it that makes what? this fact obsolete. Isekai fans have nothing better to do than wait. Hell yeah, brother. I'ma wait till you give me another fucking isekai so we can farm it. Many have complained that there are too many bad isekai. No. Give me more bad isekai so that we can watch it, break it apart, and shit on it and laugh at it together, and it's a fun time. That the market is oversaturated, but I must remind you of the law of equivalent exchange. For every good isekai, there must also be a hundred adifretas. Hello, have you- Adifretas not bad! The CGI is atrocious. I give it like a 6 or 7 out of 10. Doesn't mean it's bad. It's mid maybe, but like, come on. You heard of our lord and savior Yuna from hit show Kuma 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 Bear, the greatest anime known in existence. We need to watch Kuma 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 Bear Bear one of these days. Now, to join our cult, all you have to do is... Yeah. Oh, this sorry. This is a tale of ancient... No, 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 no. We're not going to watch that. Competition. Please, guys, this is my first video of Equinox that I've watched. That was a pretty good breakdown of one of the genres that we all love <laughs> and hate, love to hate on. Fucking isekai genre. Go give it a like. I love this breakdown of all the, you know, classic shit that we see in Isekai, right? You know, the, how the female characters are always just, you know, harem bait. And as soon as they become folded over, you know, the main character, they have no, you know, uh, actual character. All the maps are all the same. Guild receptionist, it's always the same format. truck -kun, summoning, and all of that. But something about these repeated things happening over again, like a bingo checklist, gets this familiarity sense in me and whenever a new isekai debuts even if it's good or bad i'm excited to watch it because at the end of the day i'm here to eat again the shitty junk food not some kind of fanciest restaurant meal i'm here to turn my brain off and shit eat some shitty junk food and that's it for me